So I've been using the Apple Vision Pro for about half a day now, and I found at least four incredible use cases that I just did not expect with this. And like, this is such a new technology, and I think it's pretty rare that we see new products hit the market that enable you to do things that just didn't exist before. Pretty much all new tech features can be categorized in, in three ways. One, completely new stuff that you just could not do before. Two, stuff that you could do before, but you can do better on this new product. And three, new things that are kind of gimmicky, like you could do them better in another way. And so with this, I think there are quite a few things that are in category number one there. Things that you just could not do with other devices. Like yeah, 3D televisions existed, other VR headsets existed, but there's still a lot of stuff on here that just is not comparable to anything else. So in this video, since I've been using this for about half a day now, I wanted to give you my impressions and go through those four things I found that you just really couldn't do on any other devices, as well as what I found in the middle category, things that you could do on other devices, but you can kind of do them differently here, like maybe it's a little bit better in some ways. And then the third category being things that I thought I was going to be able to do better on here, but honestly, like they're just better off done, not with this device. So let's get into it. I'm gonna have a lot of videos coming out about this in the next couple of weeks as I really test it thoroughly with each of these use cases. So if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe so you don't miss those videos. Like I'm so excited to make them and I think you're gonna like them. All right, so let's start off with the setup experience. It was pretty streamlined, it was easy to do. In the box you have a lot of stuff, it's a pretty big box. Of course you have this little battery pack looking thing which unfortunately you can't really disconnect that. Like I thought, I'd be able to plug this into any other outlet instead of going to the battery and then plugging the battery into the wall, but it is what it is. The power cable, because this of course has no battery in there, goes on the left side and you kind of snap it on, it's magnetic and it snaps in and then you rotate it so it locks in. That's so it doesn't fall off while you're wearing it and, and kill the entire headset. Then on the right side, on this band in particular, we have a little knob that you turn to adjust it. So you kind of want to pinch it in the, in the front, hold it like that because Anywhere else is not really that stable. Like the eyepiece, it's all magnetic, comes right off. So you wanna hold it in the front like that. You put it on your head, you dial that little thing until it's nice and snug, and then the headset turns on. And the cool thing is that you can actually set this up with your iPhone nearby, uh, and you don't actually have to take the headset off to see that. Like the pass-through on this was really quite impressive. I could see my iPhone while I was setting it up, I could read everything, and uh, it did a good job. Now the next step in the setup process is making your persona, and this is something that I didn't actually expect to happen on this headset, so when you're capturing it, the way it does this is with the external cameras on here. So you actually end up taking the headset off, looking at it, the front display tells you where to look, and the speakers are surprisingly loud. Like you can hear, Slowly like it tells you, look up, right. look to the right. And, and so I thought that was really quite interesting. Like the front display in here, we'll get back to that in a minute, where I think that should be used and probably will be used, like it could be useful. Now the little avatar that it makes for you is honestly a little bit uncanny. It looks a little bit off, but uh, it tracks your face well when you're wearing it. I mean, not bad, it, it, did, it did the job. The third thing that you do when you're setting this up is set up optic ID. Now that's kind of like face ID, but it uses your eyes uh, to identify that you are you. It uses that to sign in, it uses that for Apple Pay. And no, Apple Pay is not like you're dunking your head on, uh, on a little credit card reader. It's Apple Pay for like inside apps or on websites, for example. Then you're brought to the home screen, which is very familiar. It looks a lot like an Apple Watch or an iPhone. Like you've got the little bubbles. The way you control this is also really interesting in case you haven't seen any other videos about this. Essentially, it just tracks your eyes and then you pinch and that's how you select things. I thought there was going to be more of a learning curve to it, but honestly, you put it on everywhere you look, it's super accurate, you just pinch. Uh, there is a rotating crown on the top right that works as a button, that's your home button. That's also how you switch between like an ambient view to see everything around you and an immersive view that shows like mountains or a lake or something like that. Super easy, like navigating this thing was fantastic. Pinching, looking, it all worked so well. But let's get into the different use cases that I kind of found with this. Oh, and by the way, you don't just have to look and pinch, even though you can type on a keyboard like that, when the keyboard pops up or the number pad pops up, you just poke it, like you can use your finger and, and kind of punch it like that and uh, it works well, like you can do either way. And I, I thought that was 
pretty impressive. Okay, so use case number one that I didn't really expect to be nearly as good as it was on here is reliving memories in 3D. So of course you can already view photos and videos on here and they're incredible, like they're really big, they're very immersive, but that's not the only way I would be using this. In fact, that's probably the least significant. What you can do, however, the second way is with panoramas, of course. So if you have panoramas on your phone, let's be honest, we all take them when you go to the top of a mountain and you basically never look at it again. But with this, it stretches it all the way around you and it actually looks really good. Like I was quite impressive. The third thing, and these keep getting better and better, the third way to relive memories is with stereo video from your iPhone. So iPhone 15 does this, 15 Pro, Pro Max. Um, and this, like you can see, it looks very three-dimensional, photos and videos. Uh, so you can watch stuff and it feels a lot more like you're there. It's not super immersive, like it's kind of just in front of you and, and the surroundings are a little bit dissolved. So it's kind of like blended in. But still, it, it did it did a pretty good job and it was pretty impressive. But the one that I thought was by far the most impressive, what really blew me away and, and why this little segment of the video even exists are the 3D photos and the 3D videos that you capture with the Vision Pro. So like it was really just next level. I thought it was so impressive. So for example, like this little demo video that they showed that was captured on the Vision Pro, it was like three little kids blowing out candles on a birthday cake. And like I actually flinched because it felt like they were blowing on me. Like it looked so realistic and so three dimensional that it was just super immersive. And I think that in the past, like 3D stuff, you can never really watch it that well. And if you could, you could never record it yourself either. But having the ability to both record and then watch things in three dimensions, I think is a massive value proposition with the Vision Pro. Now I've tested it so far. I've been very impressed when you have a lot of light. In low light environments, it definitely is uh, like a little bit grainier. Like these, it's a first gen product. The cameras are doing a lot. So I expect that is going to improve with time, but even already, that's so impressive. Now, there is a little drawback with that though. And that is, I don't want to be at like a family member's important birthday event wearing this headset. And so what I can tell right now, you're not able to like hold it and record. I would love to do that, but from what I could tell, you have to be wearing it in order to record a photo or a video. So I think maybe that's going to be an update in the future. Like I just feel like it's important to be there when something happens, but also it'd be nice to capture a memory to watch later. Use case number two, this one is so fascinating. This is one that I think is going to be more of like a daily use for a lot of people. And this would be watching live events, like sporting events. It just feels like you're actually there and that's something you can't get on a TV or even on a projector. And then moving on to use case number three, this would be kind of like number two, but this is watching concerts. Uh, in addition, it could be like watching plays or musicals or Broadway, whatever you're into. Like that would all be so nice to use with this because like I said, the sound is going to be your big aspect on this. And a big benefit is that the Apple Vision Pro actually works really well with the latest version of AirPods actually works better than your iPhone does with AirPods, not only giving you really good spatial audio, but also lossless audio. So if you are watching a concert and somebody else has a really good camera or maybe this and they're filming in the front, you could get a really good audio experience and a great video experience using this headset. Moving on to use case number four, this one I think is going to be a big game changer for some people and probably not for others. And I'll explain why that is in a second, but this would be watching 3D movies or interactive media. So, so there's really two specific pieces of media that I watch for this that, that really make me say this. One of them is on Apple TV and I think there's going to be a lot more content on Apple TV that is meant for this. It's, it's like really 3D, very immersive. It kind of feels like the sphere at Las Vegas or if you've ever been to Disney World and you went on Soarin' in Epcot, like that very like very immersive ride. Uh, that's kind of what this feels like. And being there, like you can see details and really focus your eyes wherever you want. And it feels just so different than what a TV could actually do. Now, a second thing was the immersive experience. There was kind of a little dinosaur, like a dinosaur game video kind of thing where you're watching it and things can interact with you. Like you can reach out and things will come, like a butterfly will come over and like try to land on you. And like, so this was impressive, but definitely not quite perfect. Like I did the little thing where you hold your hand out and the butterfly is supposed to land on you and it landed like a quarter inch above my finger. So it was definitely not perfect and like not yet at least, but again, that's something that even early on, I think is looking pretty promising. Now, the reason I said that the movies might not be for everyone, myself included, is that you are a lot of times moving around a lot and that could give some people some motion sickness for me. 
I feel like a little bit uneasy if you're like moving around, but I'm not moving. So it just, that part feels weird. Moving on to use case number five. This is in the middle category. What you could do without this, but with this is maybe improved. And this is using this as an external display for your laptop. I plan on doing this substantially more to really test it out. But my early th thoughts on this, for one, it is really clear, like very high resolution right in front of you. That's something that we don't see on any other previous headsets. Like the resolution on this is so much better, but there is definitely some distortion on the top. So the way I interact with my computer has to be a little different. I can't just glance around and kind of use the whole screen. I have to turn a little bit so that it is really nice and crystal clear when I'm looking at the top or the bottom right or any corners on my display. Additionally, eye fatigue is definitely very real with this. Although the resolution is great, it's much better than anything else in the market, it's still not perfect. And after using this for, I would say, I could probably make it about an hour before I really have to take it off. And I'll talk more about what happens when I take it off in a second. But otherwise, using my laptop was nice, but it kind of just gives you like one bigger display. So if you have a small laptop, that's great. If you have an iMac, there's really no point in using this because it's gonna be like the same size as what you're already seeing. In addition, you can't have multiple displays. At least I didn't see the ability to do that just yet. So you're getting one big display. Maybe if you're on like a, a small plane and you didn't really wanna like look down or, or maybe the person in front of you on the plane reclined and you can't even open up your screen all the way, then like as long as you get your hands on the keyboard, you could look up and see a pretty large display. Like on a plane, yeah, maybe that would work. At my desk, I probably won't really want to use that that much. Now, what didn't go so well, category number three, as I was describing, th things that this didn't really do better. For one, watching movies that really moved around a lot, like I said, although it was really immersive, motion sickness is definitely like a possibility. Like you feel like you're moving and sometimes that's not quite right. Another drawback on this is that while the headset is somewhat light uh, and definitely pretty comfortable. After, again, probably about an hour, it starts to feel a little bit heavy, a little bit of pressure on the back of my head. Um, so I might be trying out some different straps and, and see how that compares in the future. But at least today, um, definitely a little bit of discomfort, a little bit of a heavy device after maybe like an hour or so. Now, I do want to travel with this. I'm gonna be flying with this and just see what it's like. There is a travel mode that stabilizes the visuals. So if you're on a plane or something like that, things won't be bouncing around nearly as much. Uh, so I'm excited to see how that actually works. And what's really cool is the ability to show your surroundings or block your surroundings. And while we've seen that in other things like the MetaQuest headsets on here, like you can actually see things quite well. Like I could see my whole keyboard. I could look at my phone. Everything was very readable. It didn't look like it was a, a weird color or glitchy or anything. It looked natural, it looked a little bit noisy, but nonetheless, pretty natural. In addition, it kind of knows where stuff is. So if you place a, a virtual window like over here above your desk, there's gonna be like a little shadow on your desk, which is, I think, impressive. It makes it feel more like it's actually in the room with you. Okay, and then one final note with this, kind of getting into some of the negatives, as I said, uh, this, like when I take it off, I feel like my eyes don't work normally for like probably 15 minutes. Like I feel like, I feel like I'm like a little bit cross-eyed and struggling to see stuff. There's definitely eye fatigue with this. And I think it's gonna take some getting used to, um, but like when you're wearing it, everything's nice, it's comfortable. When you take it off, like your eyes just kind of feel weird for at least a couple minutes until your vision comes back to normal. But that's the Vision Pro so far, my first impressions. I'm super excited about this. If you haven't already, definitely subscribe. I will absolutely be testing this in all of those big use cases to see how well it actually performs. So thanks for watching, I'm Michael Bryan, and I'll see you in that next video.